Not too long ago, Call of Duty very infamously disabled its own API, stopping people from tracking their own statistics and hiding the caliber of lobbies people were experiencing both in multiplayer and in Warzone. So it may come as a surprise to you that the same company who did all of that to obscure how their matchmaking works is now releasing research papers as to how their matchmaking works. Call of Duty has just released a 20-page document with in-depth information as to how Ping is involved in the matchmaking system, but it has a ton of really useful information and is one of a series of upcoming information drops that they're going to reveal on how Call of Duty's matchmaking system works. Today I'm going to break down the first blog and I will be breaking down all the future blogs as well, so make sure you subscribe and drop a comment below for that. And whilst this research paper was supposed to be Call of Duty's way of explaining how matchmaking works and trying to get rid of some of the hypothetical excuses around it like engagement-based matchmaking or skill-based matchmaking being too powerful, I'd actually argue it's done the entire opposite and there's information in this blog that actually makes it explicitly clear that matchmaking is something that is very much refined to an algorithmic level to a point where this entire game is focused on key performance indicators that actually validate a lot of the complaints people have saying that Call of Duty has skill-based matchmaking or engagement-based matchmaking. It's worth mentioning that this blog seems to be primarily aimed at the multiplayer experience and less about the Warzone experience, but I think it's safe to say that whilst the experiences are two separate items, the general methodology for how Call of Duty approaches matchmaking on the whole isn't radically different between these two modes beyond factoring in a much larger player count. So there can be takeaways here about how Call of Duty operates that can kind of be applied to both, but there will be a Warzone specific one in future. That being said, I still think there's some very valuable information here. Call of Duty says that they account for a number of things in how their matchmaking system works. The diversity of playlists, for example, how many recent maps and modes you have played and what you would use in quick play settings, skill and performance, the input device you're using, the platform that you're playing on, and voice chat. But the thing that they do say at the very top of this blog is that connection is king, and that they prioritize heavy weighting to connection in the matchmaking process over anything else. And if you're in a high population region like Europe or North America, where you have lots of lobbies going at the same time, in multiplayer, that is the case. You do tend to find that your ping tends to be the lowest it can possibly be. However, that's definitely not the case in Warzone. I have servers in London that get me ping as low as two milliseconds, and I'm often put in servers of upwards of 20, which is a 10 time increase on ping. Yes, 20 ping is not necessarily something to complain about, but you can say that this blog definitely has a little bit of obscurity to it. And within the first few pages of this blog, whilst talking about how ping is the most important factor, they kind of actually give away what I feel to be is the underlying issue of Call of Duty's matchmaking experience. And this paragraph says it all to me, really. It says, to be sure we're providing players with the best in-match experience, we pay close attention to a bend of matchmaking focused key performance indicators. This is the delta ping or overall ping, lobby and match fullness, skill disparity, the match outcome metrics, search time, as well as more player focus KPIs, such as hour per user, lobby quit rates, player retention and churn, and player survey results. And whilst these statistics are not used in the matchmaking themselves, they tell them whether or not the matchmaking approach is working in the eyes of players. And this is what people talk about when they say engagement-based matchmaking. And Call of Duty's almost in its own way admitted within two pages into this blog that their entire matchmaking formula relies upon key performance indicators like players quitting their matches, how long somebody's playing for hours upon hours, and if somebody's just backing out of the game. Meaning that if a player is ultimately quitting Call of Duty, then that's how the matchmaking system isn't working, and they will adjust the system in order to keep them around. Ultimately, video games are about retention, they're about profit, and the only way to keep people playing and keep people happy and keep people spending is to keep them in the game. And this is where the argument of people talking about random connection-based matchmaking versus skill-based matchmaking or engagement matchmaking comes into play. Because in a regular connection-based matchmaking system, 
it would just be about connection. We wouldn't have things like skill and performance, recent maps and modes. We also wouldn't have necessarily even things like input devices or platforms being factored into what's going on. In a connection-based matchmaking environment, there is simply one factor involved in the matchmaking process. In Call of Duty's matchmaking process, there are eight factors involved, and those factors are tweaked and changed based on whether or not players are sticking around, whether they're quitting lobbies, or if they're just leaving the game generally. And before we dive into the rest of the blog, because there is generally more interesting information about what Call of Duty has to say, I think this is the big misconception Call of Duty has about releasing these blogs. They seem to think that they are demystifying the matchmaking system, when the reality is everybody already knows how it works, and everybody is already in agreement that it is a heavily rigged system that's heavily tweaked and heavily used on things like statistics and metrics in order to achieve what it would consider to be the perfect lobby. And most people at this point, whether they are a high skill player or a low skill player, believe the game is rigged against them. And whilst that probably isn't the case, and whilst there are in fact a number of factors Call of Duty likely considers in matchmaking, the reality is, is the only way to dispel that problem would be to make the random matchmaking the only way forward. This would be the equivalent of going up to your boss and explaining that there's a problem with something at work and your boss explaining the 75 reasons why this isn't a problem and you're just being annoying. This blog does go on to reveal more interesting information about matchmaking. And the biggest factor that they do tend to consider beyond ping is time to matchmaking. If somebody is matchmaking for an extremely long time, they do actually state that it will lead to more skill disparity and a more random lobby that may be less optimal, but less optimal in the sense that it's taken a long time to matchmake, which can put people off of the experience, which is definitely true. The longer the matchmaking, the more switched off from the game you become. So balancing ping-based systems with time to matchmaking, how long it actually takes for you to get into a lobby is very difficult. And Call of Duty uses an example here of a 15 second interval for matchmaking, which is what they consider to be an ideal matchmaking time. And this is a vast oversimplification for how many people are playing their game and what people are doing, but it explains how their system works. If there are a million players online, 800,000 of them might be matchmaking. Of that 800,000, say 13,000 of them will be searching concurrently at the same time and maybe 320 of those players are compatible with each other across 40 different playlists. And of those playlists, maybe there are only eight of those players who are compatible across the playlists and the different data centers. So whilst bearing in mind that ping and time to matchmaking is quite important, Call of Duty also has to factor in the number of players across all the various different data centers across all of Europe, North America, and the rest of the world, and also has to factor in the number of playlists available. So whilst a million players may sound like a huge number, in many senses of the word, there are lots of ways that that player base is being drastically split. They're being split across different regions, they're being split across different matchmaking pools, so on and so forth. And this is often why you see in Warzone, Call of Duty does not like having multiple resurgence playlists going at the same time. And for the release of Rebirth Island, they very deliberately made it so that Rebirth Island Resurgence is the only option available, and it is resulting in exceedingly fast matchmaking times. So on top of data centers, on top of the fact that people are in different regions, on top of the fact that people are playing different playlists, you also have to factor in different things like different times of day, different times of day across the world. Is it a holiday? So are more people online or are more people offline? And all of these factors can play into the matchmaking experience. But at a fundamental level, even whilst factoring in all of the key performance indicators that they're looking for, they don't want people to wait very long for a game. So whilst they will optimize ping, they will also primarily prioritize the time to search. Which is why, as somebody who plays Warzone in London, even though there are London servers where I get to ping, I can end up in France, I can end up in Germany, I can end up in Ireland, or I can end up in the Netherlands. Because connecting to those various data centers is an easy way to bridge the gap between a large volume of players into a singular lobby. Call of Duty also specifies in their blog that the data center that's best for a player may not necessarily be the one that is the closest to them. For example, entire server systems are based on the cabling systems throughout the entire country. 
They give an example where there's a data center 200 miles away with 30 ping that is more optimal than a data center 100 miles away because it has to go through a mountain range. And that mountain range may mean more cabling, it may mean a longer travel time, and it may mean a higher milliseconds in terms of ping. So for those of you who play in the United States, if you've ever wondered why it feels like you're getting slightly higher ping than you would anticipate for a server in your location, it could be that your data center is actually something further away because it's more optimal. And this is something that's checked every single time that you boot the game. Call of Duty says in this paragraph, for example, a player with a ping of 16 milliseconds to a data center in Germany might have 18 milliseconds to Holland and 22 to France. The first two will effectively be the same and the next will be very similar and a good option if it reduces wait time or improves some other matchmaking criteria. And it's worth mentioning they said all criteria. So that could also mean skill-based matchmaking or how much skill is weighted into the equation. Call of Duty's system in terms of how it isolates players into a matchmaking pool, given the various different regions across the world and also the time of day and other factors that may affect population, is what they call data center backup. And you may notice this when you're matchmaking for something at a strange time of day. And if you've ever seen your searching for matchmaking less than ping number keep going up and up and up, that is because we're doing data center back off. Where effectively Call of Duty decides that over a certain search period, the longer the search period continues, the more it's willing to relax its criteria for matchmaking, including ping. It's no secret as somebody who streams that in the morning I tend to get softer lobbies and you often see my games matchmake for longer in the morning as well because the game is effectively slowly making it sure that everybody who's matchmaking at the same time as me can't reach the ideal criterion for the matchmaking algorithm and therefore decides to relax. And many of you will know in the past during the rise of the era of Call of Duty VPNs, the longer the matchmaking tends to run, the more the matchmaking tends to be relaxed. You are substantially less likely to run into an extremely sweaty lobby if the matchmaking takes a long time. And the reason for that is because the expansion of the number of players who could potentially play with you as the game relaxes its ping rules, relaxes its other matchmaking criterion, is slowly happening. So the more the game chills out, the more likely you're going to have a chill out lobby. Call of Duty also says that they regularly monitor the overall ping of players to see that they are in sufficient conditions, conditions that they consider to be good for the game, good for the general player experience, and that is generally true. Whilst I can say that skill-based matchmaking is definitely a thing, and to some extent, if you believe the KPI segment, engagement-based matchmaking arguably is a philosophy of it, even though I have a London server with two ping, I definitely can't complain about sub 20 ping. Anything under sub 20 is already considered to be pretty good. And at the last piece of the blog, they do say that whilst they've kept in mind these snapshots of the Delta ping, which is the time it takes for you to send information to the server and receive it back, pretty much everybody is in a good range. There will be some variance based on regions like Oceana, for example, has generally less data centers, so on and so forth. But if you look at this screenshot in terms of delta ping versus skill percentile bucket, even if you are in the highest skill category, the vast majority of players are sub 20 ping, or at least at the bare minimum, sub 40 ping. So without a shadow of a doubt, Call of Duty is achieving what they consider to be optimal matchmaking in terms of connection, even with all of the other factors being considered which is why things are likely not going to shift because they believe they're receiving results, which in the case of connectivity and ping, arguably they are. This was a really interesting blog to read, and overall I do have some general disagreements with Call of Duty's philosophy. I do think that admitting that there are key performance indicators that they're using to tweak matchmaking is effectively engagement-based matchmaking, and I also do believe, regardless of how Call of Duty tries to display these blogs or paint these pictures in terms of data, it is fairly universally felt across all Call of Duty players that the game has an extremely tight matchmaking system, and it's felt that way from pretty much everybody, even people who aren't conventional Call of Duty players notice it very early on. So explaining all of this doesn't necessarily change the fact that people are dissatisfied with the current status quo. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. If you want to see more breakdowns, make sure to drop a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.